tell you, with worship like that, huh? Amen? We have, I love to say this, and, and you know, I'm just bragging about Jesus, but what, a, what an awesome worship, folks, we have. Amen? You, we just can't take them for granted. <laughs> They're awesome. So glad to have them, and uh, they're blessed to be a blessing to you and I, and, and uh, so we are so thankful for them. Today we start a series on the book of Jonah. If you don't know where Jonah is in your Bible, there's a place on the very beginning of your Bible called the Table of Contents. It is a godly page in the Bible. You're welcome to turn to it. Don't be ashamed or afraid to use it. <laughs> it's okay. It's on page 1126 in my Bible. It may be different than yours. <laughs> Today we start this series. It's four parts, maybe, hopefully. Might be more as we get along the way. But... Jonah has all, this book has always been portrayed as a, as a children's story. Well, you know, it's not. It's not. It is a very important word for you and I. It's very important for us to, to experience this together. We're going to approach it probably a little different than you probably ever have ever been a part of a study of this particular book. But then again, you know I'm just really different, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. Let's look together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read this, and on the screen it's going to be in a, a different version than probably what you have. This particular version is the amplified version. And now, it doesn't mean that your version doesn't work. It just means that this one explains just a little bit, a little bit more in detail for you and I. Um, and the Amplified is not a sinful book, it's, it's the Bible, okay? But let's turn our Bibles to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. We're going to read just a couple of three verses together. Look what it says, And now the word of the Lord came to Joseph, the son of Amittai, saying, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim judgment or against it, for their wickedness has come before me. But Jonah ran away to Tarshish to escape the presence of the Lord, and his duty as his prophet. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenician trading cities. So he paid the fare and went down to the ship to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in our lives today. And how, Father, that you will help us see your plan for our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if in, in, in the study, I was reading an article that was last, about last week. Now, Nineveh is in the north of Iraq, and ISIS today is planning to destroy the, what's left of Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was just right outside of Mosul, which is in northern Iraq today. It is the capital of the Assyrian army, or the Assyrian empire, and it was the most import, it's, it's one of the most important sites in Iraq today. Now, being, being that Nineveh is located in northern part of Iraq, it was the most populated city in the world at that time. Now, Nineveh, the people of Nineveh and the Assyrians were haters of the Jews, of Israel. They were extremely proud of their conquest. And to get the full scope of, of what the Ninevites liked to do to the Israelites was that they would, they would kill them and they would nail them to their walls and stack them outside their gates to show everybody their conquest of the Israelites. And it's believed that since this was going on at that particular time, Noah believed that, you know, well, he would hope that God would destroy him instead of save them. 
Now, the efforts, the overall efforts that, that went through prolonged the destruction of Nineveh about 150 years. Now, I want you to notice two things. I've got two maps for you, and the first of which... Now, it's the starting point of, of Jaffa, or Joppa, as it's translated out of the original language. Now, I want you to see where, where Joppa basically is on, on this very bad-to-scale map. Now, Nineveh is off the screen, uh, just a piece, in, like we were talking about in northern Iraq. Now, I want you to see that he said that he went down to Joppa. We're going to see this. He went down to Joppa to catch a, 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 a boat to Tarshish. Now, I want you to look at the difference in, in the locations of the places that where God wanted him to go versus where he wanted to go. Now, as, as Jonah is running, there's a, there's a vast area between where he should be and where he wants to go. Now, I want you to understand something. He could have been next door, but being out of the will of God is being out of the will of God. Whether it's a far distance or just right there beside us. Now, second of all, I want us to see this map, this next map, which gives us the distance. Now, he went down to Jaffa, Joppa, and he was supposed to go to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was approximately 550 miles. Now, 550 miles in that particular time wasn't that far. They walked everywhere, right? So, but I want you to look at the distance between the two. Tarsus was approximately 2,500 miles away. Now, all he had to do was travel 550 miles. Now, I want you to get something out of this map because it's very important. Many times we think, I want you to hear me, many times that we think if we ignore God's calling, it'll go away. Or he'll find somebody else to do it. No. Many times, many folks believe that if they'll ignore something long enough, it'll go away. No. That just doesn't happen. Have you ever known a bill collector just to go away? Huh? No. He's not, God's not going to find someone else to do the job. He's waiting on you. Do you really think God gives up on us that easy? No, He doesn't. There's a plan in place, as Josh was saying a little bit ago. But we have to ask ourselves, what are we running from? Now, there are times that we find ourselves in the valley, and I understand that. You, you have, I have, we will. But when we're in the valley... There's one thing that's evident about being in the valley, and that's that we can see the mountain range ahead of us. There's always a goal. There's always something to keep us motivated. Now, you see, I believe the Bible as a whole. I believe, there's a, I believe the Bible completely as a whole. Now, many people and scholars have trouble with this story because they look at it as a story and not the Word of God. But I want you to hear me. Now, when a man catches a fish, it's no big deal. But when a fish catches a man, now that's front page news. Huh? If you can believe that Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, died on a cross and rose on the third day, a fish is not that hard to believe. Even Jesus believed it. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40 and 41 it says, for jo and this was in red letters, and I like that. And, and, and for Jonah was there three days and three nights in the, in the well's belly. And so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. What's this story about? What's this story about? We've got to ask ourselves. What's this story about? It's not about Jonah. Jonah was only mentioned 18 times in the book. Now, as a translational thing, in original language, we find that his name was mentioned about three time, uh, 18 times. It's not about the fish. The fish was mentioned approximately four times in the book. It's about the Father. God is mentioned 38 times in the book. 38 times. 
Jonah was running from God because of what he wouldn't do. What he wouldn't do. Have you run from God? Have you run from God? So you have to ask yourself, it's a serious question. Have you run from God? Are you running from God? God is calling you to do something right now. He's calling you to to take action. Because I want to tell you something, and I've said it before, Christians have sat on the pews long enough. It's time to take action and do what God's called us to do, to do the very things that we were created to do. Yes, to worship and, and and to have a relationship with God, but to go and make disciples. If we're not telling people about Jesus, we're failing as His children. I know that there's folks in this room right now that are running from God. Right now. And if you're running from God, there is one of two reasons why. There's one of two reasons. And I'm not here to upset anybody. I'm here to make you think, motivate you, and get you going because God's in the house and it's time to be real. Amen or oh me? Some of you have already went to sleep. I tell Jim all the time, when I grow up, I just want to be like you, because you keep us all excited. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) One of two reasons why we run. Number one, number one, look, look what it says. You're afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid of doing God's will. Afraid of committing to God. Afraid of losing all those good drinking buddies. You're afraid of losing all them good smoking buddies. You're afraid to lose all them old cussing buddies. You're afraid to lose all your friends. I'm going to tell you something. Stop being afraid and start sharing the name of Jesus. And maybe those friends might get saved. And when they get saved, you'll have more folks to go out and share Jesus' name with you. And you won't be afraid anymore. It's time to stop being afraid. The Bible says, The Lord is my helper, and I shall not fear what man shall do to me. I want you to understand, when we grasp, when we grasp that that God is God, and we are His children, and this is not our home, and, and... And heaven's our home. What's there to be afraid of here on this earth? Nothing. Nothing. Number one, you're afraid. Now get ready. Because religion is out. Jesus is in. Huh? Huh? Number one, you're afraid. Number two, you're arrogant. You're arrogant. Arrogant because you know better. Arrogant because you're so willing to point out other people's flaws. Arrogant because you're so willing to point out other people's mistakes and point out their problems rather than praying and helping. Huh? I knew, I, I knew that would bring silence. I knew it. I prayed, God, that's just not going to go over very well. He said, put it down. Listen, there's only one of two reasons we're running as a, as a born-again child of God. We're afraid or we think we're better than God. Huh? Huh? You see, how many times have we said, and, and, and I'm going to use Wednesday night visitation, and how many times have we said, well, you know, I'm not going to go to visitation. Somebody else can do that. Did well, Sort of sounds like Jonah, doesn't it? Maybe somebody else will go tell that person about Jesus. Right next door, being out of God's will right next door is just like traveling 25, trying to travel 2,500 miles to get away from God's presence. Huh? You see, those are the only two reasons that, that we run from God. 
when we're a born again child of God. If we look at ourselves as a child of, of the King, and we are, we have no problem. When my dad came to church a month ago, okay, people come up to him and I would say, this is my dad, didn't I? Some of you met him. This is my dad. It's Hal. This is Hal. Hal Doss. This is my dad. We're real quick to be able to intro- introduce our dad, our mom, our children, our friends. But how willing are we to introduce the very one that created us, saved us, and prepared a home for us? In heaven. See, when we put it in perspective, we, we really ask ourselves, how willing are we to share the name of Jesus? We can't be afraid, because the Bible tells us not to be afraid. And we can't be arrogant, because self-righteousness... <laughs> It clouds the righteousness of God. We can't say, well, God knew I was sinning. That's why he didn't stop me. There was a, there was a son in the Bible who said... I just want everything and I want to go away. Now you remember that. He went away and found himself in his own little Tarshish or the pig slop. He came home. Would you be willing today to come home? Hear me now, the devil will always provide a ship. He will always pay your fare. He has a boat waiting to take you from God's will. Will you pay the fare? Will you pay the fare? We read that Jonah, he paid the fare. Paid the fare to get out of the presence of God. There's a couple of things here that we need to understand. First of all, we disobey. We disobey. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. This was twofold for Jonah. Not only did he try to get away from the presence of God, he didn't get, just get away from the presence of God, he got away from the purpose of God. See, it's twofold. We have a tendency to try to get out of the presence of God. It tells us here that he took the boat to get out of the presence of God. He ran to get out of the presence of God. It was, I want to tell you something. God, God in his presence, guess what? He's everywhere. So good luck with that, right? But he also ran to get away from the purpose of God. What was the purpose? Nineveh was a wicked city. to Go spread the gospel. Go tell somebody about Jesus over in Nineveh. While we're in the valley of decision, God is patient. When we're running, when we're running away from God out of pride and arrogance and choose another way I want you to understand, God has mercy and He's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to turn around and go the other direction. He's waiting for us to run to Him like the prodigal son did. He's waiting. He's waiting for us. If you choose another way other than God, it will be the most expensive trip you will ever take. I want you to understand something. Disobedience will take you further than you want to go. Disobedience will take you further than you want to go, but disobedience will keep you longer than you want to stay. And disobedience will cost you more than you want to pay. Huh? You see that? Can you see what being disobedient does? See, we disobey, and we're, we're, we're defiant to God and His will. And when we get, when we get into sin, and, and, and it just, after a while, becomes so easy because we've paid the fare. We've spent the milk money on the fare. 
just to get out of the presence and purpose of God. And it's going to keep you. It's going to cost you. It's going to take you places that you don't want to go. And so I'm begging you, stop. I'm begging you just to repent and turn to God. You see, not only do we disobey, God disciplines us. (laughs) God disciplines us. God will provide a storm. I want you to look at verse 4. Verse 4. Jonah chapter 1. But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. I want you to understand, now that is, (laughs) that's a big storm. God God will provide a storm. Now, there's two things that, that, that I know for sure. I grew up uh, with, with in, in a, my dad was in the Navy, okay? There's two things I know about this story. It's a bad storm when sailors are afraid. Huh? It's a bad storm when sailors are afraid. And it's a real bad storm when sailors pray. Huh? <laughs> You hear me? It's a bad storm. The sailors didn't ask for this. Look what it says in verse 5. And then the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God and cast forth uh, the wares that were in the ship unto the sea to lighten it. But Jonah was gone into the sides of the ship and he was laying and he was, he was asleep. I want to tell you something. The storm was pretty rough. And here they were, the, 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 the shipmates, they were all afraid and they were crying and they were praying and they were doing everything they could. They were throwing things overboard just to, just to make sure the, the, the ship wouldn't sink. And, <laughs> I know sailors, they didn't ask for this. When we run, do we not choose God's will? What's going on in our lives? We're not only hurting ourselves, but we're hurting those around us. Look look where Jonah was at. He was in the the midst of the the boat. He was asleep. And, And everybody else is paying for his sin. Everybody is paying for his self-righteousness. Everybody is paying for his, his disobedience to be in the presence of God and in the purpose of God. Now, I want you to understand something. We, I did a sermon, some sermon uh, series on the landmines, landmines of sin and fear. It affects a lot of people. Now, the, the sailors tried everything they could to calm the storm, to lighten the load. But something was missing, and here he was, he was asleep. I read a story about, about a, a, a one particular ship that was sinking, and there was a ship sinking, and the, ga- the captain gathered all the crew and asked, everyone, asked anybody, does anybody know how to pray? And, and there was a young man that spoke up and said, yes, sir, I know how to pray. And the captain said, good, you pray while we put on the life vest because we're one short. They were trying to save themselves while Jonah slept. You see, running from God, you can run from God, but you can't get away from God. Early in the career of Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay, he had an opponent uh, that, was, that was coming up at, a, at an upcoming fight. And they asked him, not Cassius Clay, but the opponent, they asked him, so what, how are you going to fight? And the opponent said, well, I'm going to run around the ring until he just tires out. And the champ was asked about what he said. And Muhammad Ali looked at him and looked at the reporter and said, well, he can run, but he can't hide. Hmm? Adam and Eve felt the same way, didn't they? Obedience, obedience brings blessings. Disobedience brings burdens. Look at verse 2 again. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come before me. The first thing we see is, is God's demand. He demands for us to go and to share God's word. God's word is God's will. If we're looking for God's will for your life, just read your Bible. Read your Bible, see, and we've said this many times, but if we would just simply read our Bible, but many folks don't. 
Yes, it came in the form of a demand. Thou shalt not steal. Don't marry an unbeliever. Love your neighbor. Now, remember that Nineveh was the, captain of the, uh, was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. It was the mortal enemy of Israel. It was like asking a Jew to go witness to Hitler. God's going to tell you and I to do things we just don't want to do. Tithe, apologize, change your habits, study more, pray more, sing more, witness more. Be more than you are. Come to church more. God's going to ask you to go into the most hated places and tell the truth about Christ. Maybe your workplace, maybe your family. You know, Thanksgiving's coming up and we're all going to be, everybody's going to be sitting around their tables and, and, and maybe eating turkey after the report I saw today of a turkey shortage. That just scares me to death. And, and uh, you know, I don't want smoked trout for, for... Anyways, I'm sorry, that was just come out of nowhere. You're going to have all your families around the table. How many of you, are you going to pray? Are you going to share Jesus? Get around the table and say, what are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for turkey because there's a shortage. No, don't be thankful for Jesus. Huh? When I was studying this and, and, and I got to this part, I, I'm going to tell you something. I thought of Guy Ship in that ministry. How many of you would be willing to go into the most hated prison and, and witness to people? I love the hands that just went up. Well, I'll pray for him. Well, maybe that's not your Nineveh, but God has a Nineveh for you. Huh? Amen? See, we don't want to admit that. We're going, well, yeah, I agree with that, I guess. We all have a Nineveh, and God's calling us to go to it, but we have chosen to not only run from the presence of God, but to run from the purpose of God. You see, God demands, but we decide. God demands, but we decide. When we wake up every morning, we, we wake up and decide whether we're going to follow the Father or we're going to go our own way. Now, I, go back to verse 3. But Jonah, look what happened. But Jonah rose up to flee, from, uh, flee unto Tarshish in the pre, from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Jaffa. And, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid the fare and went down to it to go unto them at Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want you to look at, look at the theme. He was doing everything he can to get away from the presence of God. Make a decision. Make a decision. And here he says, I don't want to do the will of God. Well, you know, Jesus said, Father, if, it's, if, if it be your will, fine, but if, if, if you can't take this cup from me, but it's your will be done, not my will. You know, these things can be said of, of Jonah. What, what happened to him? Now, we got to give Jonah a D for determination. He could have just went 550 miles, but he chose to get on a pay the fare and go somewhere 2,500 miles away. Nineveh was equal to God's will. Tarshish was equal to his will. Jonas. Nineveh is what God wants you to do. Tarshish is what you want to do. Every day you and I visit one of those cities. Every day it's going to see and it's going to show to us are we going to be willing to be obedient to God and go to our Nineveh or are we going to be disobedient to God and run to Tarshish? Are you going to be that disobedient? Because God, God truly wants us to be obedient. Every day we make that decision. You see, Tarsus is the place where, where it says, just throw in the towel, or it'll never work, or we've always done it that way. You know, that is the most hated phrase a pastor could ever hear. Well, we've always done it that way. Well, bless God, guess what? We're not going to do it that way anymore. 
If you say, well, we've always done it that way, that's code word to me and Jim and Josh and Edgar. That's code word for us to, say, to hear. You know what we hear when you... We're not going to do it that way no more. Huh? That's the way it ought to be. Because if it ain't, if it ain't working, then why do we keep on doing it the same old way? You get the same old results. Mm, that is a whole nother sermon. I just... Just throwing in the towel. It'll never work. Nineveh is the place of obedience and Tarshish is the place where, you know, can you imagine? I want you to get this. He paid the fare, got on the boat, and he's thinking, you know, grass is always greener on the other side. Well, you know, let me be honest with you. The grass is always greener over the septic tank. Truth or a lie? That's the truth. Uh Uh-huh. Tarshish was his septic tank. I don't know nothing about the city, but to him that's what it was. The grass was always greener. Grass is going to be greener over there. I'm going to get away from God's will. I'm just going to get out of His presence. And if I get far enough away, if I, if I, don't, if I ignore what God's saying, then bless God, He'll get somebody else to do it. Because, you know, God is good. And, you know, He's, he's not going to let anybody... He's not going to let anybody... He's not, not going to send anybody to hell. I want to tell you something. God doesn't send you to hell. You do. By not accepting Him as... Personal Lord and Savior. Hmm? If we're not obedient, if we're stay the course and be obedient. Don't react to your feelings, but by the Word of God. What city are you going to visit today? What city? Paying the fare. Paying the fare. Verse 3, paid the fare. He paid the fare. The most expensive ticket you will ever pay for will be the ticket you pay to get away from God. Amen. If God says go north, go north. Too many people go in the opposite direction that God wants them to go. There'll always be a ship to ride on. Just pay the fare. Buy the ticket. The enemy is waiting for you to climb on board. The enemy will hold out his hand to help you get on that boat. Did you buy a ticket? What ticket did you buy? How about that ticket to stay away from church? Did you buy that ticket and it costs so much you can't even tithe or give to the church anymore? Buy that ticket to Tarshish will keep you from doing God's will. Look, the devil will open the doors for you to choose to say no to God. Well, many folks will say, well, Brother Brad, I'm here, I'm in church. Well, that's true, but is the ticket in your pocket? And when you walk out on that, walk out those doors in just a few short moments, will you be back on your journey? You see, when we buy that ticket, we actually believe that we've gotten away with something. Like we're the first to really get away from it. Really? Really? Is that what people think? Like I said, go back to Adam and Eve. You know, David, King David, the man after God's own heart, he sinned, committed adultery, committed murder, and took a census. He counted people. Sinned and thought that he could just get away with it. No. See, we think we can get away with so much. The ticket that we buy to get away from the presence of God or just to live our life costs us too much. 
I want you to look at verse 7 real quick. And they said, everyone, uh, to, to, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know what causes this evil upon us. So they cast lots and every time, guess who it fell on? Jonah. I want you to hear what I have to say because this is very important. He's not trying to take you back. He's trying to bring you back. As a born-again child of God, He's not trying to take you back. He's trying to bring you back. Huh? Bring you back to service. Bring you back to obedience. Bring you back to being in His presence. Verses 8 through 10 tells us where the trouble came from. And then they said, tell us, we pray thee, For whose cause this evil upon us? What is thy occupation? Where'd you come from? What country? What kind of people are you from? And he said, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and dry land. Then then were the men exceedingly afraid. Once again, something a, 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 a Navy brat doesn't understand. What have you done? Why have you done this? For the men knew that he'd fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them. I read this, I read this long, uh, uh, sermon a long time ago. It was in Hebrew by a Hebrew priest. And he was preaching this sermon. And he was talking about how, how the, the men, they would grab Jonah. And he was just using a little bit of license here. He would grab Jonah and he would, they would, the men would take Jonah and they would dip his feet. Dip his, the very feet of him in the water. And, and the seas calmed, and the wind stopped, and, and the boat sit still. And they pulled Jonah out of the water, all right? And then this, it would rage again, and, and the boat looked like it was going to sink. So the men grabbed Jonah again, and they dipped him to the waist, and they held him in the water. And when they held him in the water, guess what? The wind and the seas calmed again. And then they pulled him back out, and then it happened again. And so they grabbed him by the arms, and they jumped all the way to the neck. And it calmed again. The men knew. The men knew. They knew what was going on. He said, look, just verse 12, take me up and cast me into the sea. And the sea's going to just get calm. And look what, look what happened in verse 13. And the men said, no, we're not going to do that. You'll drown. We're just going to try to, to do this. And they began to row hard to bring the boat to land. And they could not. In verse 15, it's, the word says they finally took him up and threw him into the raging sea. Just take me up and throw me into the sea. He would rather die than obey. Huh? Did you hear that? Jonah would rather die then obey. Just throw me in the sea. I want to tell you something. There's a little girl. She got a a new trike for her birthday. Now, her mama had set boundaries on the sidewalk. Now, she kept going past them boundaries, you know, as kids do. Here she'd go, and there was this little line or or the mailbox there. Don't go past that mailbox. Well, here she'd go past that mailbox. She kept doing it time and time again. And as a good mama, she said, listen, brought her over to her. Said, if you go past that mailbox one more time, I'm going to spank your little tail. Huh? I can say that, right? Is that okay? I can say that on TV, right? Okay, good. I say it on the internet. Anyway, (laughs) I'm going to spank your little tail. Well, you know what the little girl did? Huh? The little girl pointed at her little tail and say, well, just go ahead because I got places to go. Huh? (laughs) I like that. God doesn't chase you. He waits for you. 
I believe this whole time, I believe the large fish was there all along, don't you? I believe that, I believe that the large fish was waiting right outside a port for them to pull out. It's God's plan. He's sovereign. He knows what he... Listen, he's there. I believe the large fish was there. The way back to the Father was right there beside Him. And let me tell you something. And I want you to hear, I want you to hear me. This is the most important thing I'm going to say. The fish is right there beside you to take you back into the will of God, into the presence of God. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. So no matter what, how far you've run, no matter what ticket you've purchased, God has provided a way to get you away from it and to get you back to Him. He's provided a way back. Here we find that word being provision. Now look what happened in verse 16. And, and now that we're about done. The landing gear is coming down. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. You know what that tells me? You know what that tells me? They threw them overboard. The sea stopped. They made vows. They all confessed. Sailors on the boat got saved. Huh? You see, the actions, the actions of one that's fell, that fell out of the will of God, yes, it, it affected a lot of other people, but the fact that he ended up just being obedient affected them even greater. God has made a way for you and I. You hear me? God has made it a way, made a way. In verse 17, and now the Lord prepared a great fish, swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly three days and three nights. God has made a provision. God has made a provision. Go ahead, Angela. He's made a provision for you and I. He's made a provision for you and I to, since we have got away from the will of God, since we have chosen to run from God, God has made a provision. And that provision is sitting right next beside you. That provision is is a, a provision to take you back to Him. Are you willing today, are you willing today to let God interrupt you during this invitation and say, listen, the seas of my life have been raging. The wind has been blowing. And it feels like this ship is sinking. It's not. It's not. Because He's right there alongside of you. He's right there alongside of you. He's beside you and He's beside me. He's provided a way for you and I. For when the, when the waves turn and the winds blow he's provided a way I'm going to ask you today regardless of the ticket that you have bought that's keeping you away from the will of God I'm going to ask you today would you tear it up would you just Whatever, whatever fare you've paid, will you just surrender it to the Lord? Because it sure costs a lot of money and keeps us from doing exactly what God wants us to do. You see, this book, this story, this first chapter, it ain't about you and I. It ain't about John. It ain't about the boat. It ain't about the sailors. 
It ain't even about the fish. It's about God wanting to be a part of your life. Have you bought a fare to take you away from God? That little piece of paper, that little bit of time or money or whatever you spent to to be away from God, it's going to end up costing you more than you want to pay. Take you places you don't want to go. My prayer is that here in just a second, we're going to start singing and if you need to come to this altar and lay that fare on these steps, would you do that? Maybe there's someone in here that, that you need to go to and you just need to pray with them. I challenge you. Stop going 2,500 miles when God's just asking you to go across the street across the aisle, across the auditorium. To share the love of Jesus. Standing or sitting hasn't worked this, to this point. It's time to move and go to Nineveh. And if God's calling you to go to, a, go to a place, a person. If God's calling you to your Nineveh, why, why are we not going? Why have you not left? Folks, God just wants to have a relationship with you. Let's stop running. Let's stop running. Let's stand if we can. Let's Josh and Connie to go ahead and be up here. And folks, if you need to come, would you come? Would you come to this altar? Would you go to somebody? Let's be in the presence of God and do the purpose of God. It's up to you. God demands, but we choose. What are you going to choose today? Are you going to choose Him or choose you? You make the choice. Jim?